Hello! It's me, Wild Rose and what just appeared, and I found out that I really like doing these really stupid videos. So today, stupid quizzes. This one. Run a restaurant with cat employees. The worst way possible to find which cooking utensil you are. I don't know how those phrases, those ideas relate, but I'm really curious. Okay, welcome to your new career as a restaurant owner. Pays well? Ha! No, it really doesn't. Try again, but at least everyone who works in and comes to the restaurant is a cat or something close. <gasps> Freaking exterior. Yes, please. Floor, it's free authentic. The paint smells funny, definitely haunted. Ooh, outdoor restaurant where it's always cold. No, I actually, th this one immediately caught my eye because if I were to have a restaurant where cats come in, it'd be friggin' that one, dude. That's a wise choice. Some old furniture washes up on the seashore, so you give it a little upcycle. You can make any of these interiors with this new furniture. Shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, it doesn't even... Okay, it doesn't even, like, tell me the descriptions of them. It's just... Ooh. I mean, yeah, look, that even has... Oh, no, that has katanas. Um... Wait, what? Oh, no, go back! No, wait! I'm sorry! No! I don't want to do that! I'm sorry! No, go back! Okay. Ah, hmm. Okay, we fixed it. So if I were to have a restaurant where everybody's cats or something, it'd probably still be that one, yeah. The restaurant is decorated and ready to go. Now you need some staff. Pick a chef who will be beating, who will be <clears throat> not beating anything. The beating heart of the center of your restaurant. Read their CV to choose. Name, dough ball. Signature dish, hearty stew. Skills, count backwards for 10. Can balance on one leg for five seconds. Pretty good at baking, but only in a special hat. Oh. Little helper, helper, little helper. <laughs> I mean, his food is full of cat. Oh, but at least it's his own. <clears throat> oh, that's a puppy. Name: John. Signature dish: meat. Skills: flying and golf. Weakness: He has a deep secret that could ruin the legacy of your restaurant. Gonna have to pass on John. He looks like he serves people or other dogs as his food. Name: Francine. Signature dish. It's a surprise. Skills, arguing with the customers. Weakness, she's freelance, so we'll cook when she wants to cook. Hmm, Francine. Good energy, but you're like from one of those kitchen nightmare shows. Name, Tittles Jr. Tittles Jr. That's amazing. Special dish, deconstructed cheese on toast. Oh. You never want to hear deconstructed anything on a menu. That means it's like hipster as hell. Skills, playing the flute and crying. Weakness, can't cook, but we'll try his best. Also needs supervision use of the oven. Tittles, I actually like you. Okay, anyway. Name, you will call him chef and nothing else. That's normal in kitchens. You're supposed to just call chef, chef. A uh, special dish, revenge. Skills, has never slept and never will. It can hold his breath for half an hour. Weakness, allergic to flour. Jesus Christ, chef. Ravioli. Signature dish, spaghetti bolognese with special sauce. Skills, gently crafting cooking utensils and singing jolly songs. All his sauces are water with different colored food. Oh, shit. You had me, ravioli. You had me. But I want, I want dough ball. I want dough ball. I want dough ball. Okay. You welcome the new chef with a fake smile. The chef asks, who will serve the food? I hoped you asked, you say mysteriously. You will need a waiter. <laughs> they don't have names? Come on. Skills, certainly not waiting. Re weaknesses, refuses to have fun. Skills, over 900 years of waitressing experience. Jeez, balls. Weaknesses, ominously lingers behind each customer's chair to check if they are eating their food. I mean, it is important to be paying attention to if your guests are actually eating. Um, if not, then you know to run over there and be like, is everything okay? How can I help you? Skills, mastering the art of dressing business casual. Weaknesses, terrible jokes, and says, is everything all right for you every five minutes? Okay. I know some people like that. Skills, can accurately guess your zodiac sign after 12 goes. Weaknesses, will continue to grate the Parmesan even after the customer has said when. Okay, so he's an Italian waiter, and I didn't have an Italian... Oh, shit. Party stew. Who serves the hearty stew? You look like you have the hearty two skills. skills. Choose a staff uniform. Oh, whatever they like. Awful idea. I personally, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of hate it when I walk into restaurants and everybody's just kind of wearing whatever they want because 
Not that I care, I, and I don't care. It's just that I then can't tell who works there and who doesn't. Every day without failure, the staff must dress up in a different food. Oh my God. They will do their job better if not held down by clothes. A pair of trousers, a smart tuxedo, but with a twist. It's made of denim. Okay. Every day without failure, the staff must dress up in a different food. <laughs> The restaurant is ready to open. Now choose how you will advertise. The chef and waiters will sing a song outside. Tie some food to a string and swing them around so passers-by can smell the delicious scents of your restaurant. Repeatedly screaming your restaurant's name at the top of your lungs <laughs> by leaving a bowl of your best scrambled eggs outside with a sign that says take a handful. Oh my god, these are all great. <laughs> I gotta go with repeatedly scream your restaurant's name. Every seems to be going well, but then your waiter, the waiter you chose. Can I take the day off? I've got a runny nose. Okay. I've kind of said this before. I work at a restaurant. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes, I am the manager of the restaurant. It is a big restaurant. It's just I have a position where sometimes I'm I'm a server. Sometimes I'm a manager. I was like debating whether or not I want to say that. I have actually had an employee. So it was right after Christmas. I, if you guys recall, maybe you don't. I don't know. Do I? Did I say so? I had COVID over last Christmas. I had just gotten back. It was near New Year's and I actually, my first day back, I still didn't feel great, but like the CDC has said that I was okay to go back to work. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. And work was like, we need you. Cause most of the restaurant had caught COVID, but I'm there. And this other manager who had also had COVID, literally we lost all the managers, except for one, literally one over Christmas, which is awful. If you know Christmas, it's busy, very busy, especially in our restaurant. But this, this server walks up and he's like, ah, I might need to go home. I have kind of a runny nose. And he was dead ass serious. And me and this other manager. Okay, actually looking down over the options, I was one of these. I'll let you guys try to figure out which one I was. The other one was um, uh, a different one. So fire them. Stare at them with pure disappointment in your eyes. Give them a lecture about working hard and earning a living so they can buy themselves a nice hat. Calmly explain to them that the restaurant is their life now and that illness is an illusion. Which is accurate. Anyway, which one did I pick? It's number two. I stared at them with pure disappointment in your eyes. I didn't even know what to say. Members of staff, what should we do at a, as a restaurant when it's a customer's birthday? Nothing at all. Make a coarse joke about the customer getting old. Depends on if I know them. Sing an awkward song that isn't quite a birthday song because it's copyrighted, but it's close. You can still sing the birthday song. Close your eyes and cover your ears when the customer tells you so you don't have to give them a complimentary dessert. None of these ones. Make a coarse joke about the customer getting old. Who is this? It's the owner of the competitor restaurant opposite, looking at his competition. He asks for the fish and vegetables. What instructions do you give the chef? Oh no. Make it bland and say it was inspired by you. <laughs> yeah! Make the best fish ever. We'll show him who to fear, my chef. Poison the dish. I think there's some left in the sauce cupboard. Less competition equals more money. He has a point. Make it bad on purpose. If he thinks we're no competition, he won't keep his own restaurant standards as high. We can then be the best. Make it bland. Say it was inspired by you. I love it. I love it. The staff request or staff room. You spend an <clears throat> you spend a lot of money on a nice one because why not? You're the boss and the staff mean a lot to you. Okay. The restaurant is your staff room. Live and breathe your job. Yeah, I've never had a staff room. I mean, if you mean a if you mean a room where the staff goes so that they can like relax. No, you don't have that. You pretend not to hear, or a chair in the corner, there you go. Okay, let me explain. Oh man, I'm getting kind of preachy now, or like, I'm just like rambling about restaurant stuff, but it's the same reason I can't take a break. So I'd, I've never taken a break in a restaurant job. That You can't do that because, think about it. 
I'm your server. I mean, as a manager, I can go into the back and I can kind of eat for a couple minutes and then run back out. Maybe if I let the other managers know, but as a server or as a general member of staff, when am I going to take a break? Do you, do, do I drop your food off and be like, Hey, back in 30, <laughs> have fun, buddy. Cause then what do you, I mean, I, I can't leave. I have to stay there and I can't go be hiding in a back room. I have to be present. Like I know in some restaurants, they're very loose on that where you can go and like stand in the back. But it, the one I work at, I'm supposed to always be visible in case one of my tables needs something. Even as a manager, I have to be somewhere you can see me. Uh, we, we have to be there. So I'm sorry. It's this one. You can't go hiding in a back room. That was a logical answer. It's not funny. Staff only. You face with a moral dilemma. Chef, a customer accidentally on purpose got a bit of tomato ketchup on my hat. Do you confront the customer and kick them out with force? Or do you choose money over your good friend the chef? What? Kick the customer with your bare foot. Allow the fiend to fend for themselves. You tell the chef the customer's always right and have the money. Can't deal with this. You hide in the toilets to avoid confrontation. Okay. Accident. So a customer threw ketchup on the chef's hat. I mean, if a customer throws something at my chef, who is an adorable kitty, get out of my restaurant! The next hour or so, some move smoothly. But then, customer, there's a there's a tooth in my food. Chef, lol, is it yours? Yeah. Yeah, that's almost one of the first things that we say. I'm sorry, but if you find hair in your food, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do, manager or server or anything, is I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say anything to you. I will take your food away and we'll remake it. But the first thing I'm going to look is, is that your hair? And I'm not going to ask you. I'm just going to look at your head. And if that looks at all like your hair, and I'm running through my mental list of chefs and cooks. And if not a single one has that kind of hair, it's your hair. It's you or someone at your table. Most likely it could be a prep chef. And I'll also factor that in if it's like, you know, in something weird. It's very uncommon, at least in my experience, for hair to be found in food. But sometimes, you know, yeah. Yeah, it means that maybe the prep chef took off their hat and... Mm, mm, Mm -hmm. But usually it's the customer's hair. And usually you can tell that. Usually it'll be some woman that finds like a moderately long strand of hair. And I'll be thinking, I'll be like, there is no one with that hair size in my kitchen. They all have short hair. And woman, it's the same color as yours. I know that you have long flowing locks, but there are short hairs in there. And Moving on. <clears throat> you stay hidden in the soft pit, soft pit cover, quivering with fear. So that's where that went. Ha! Ah, good one, you say, high-fiving the chef. Tough luck. You give the customer a groveling apology and tell her the chef will make two more plates of what she ordered. No, just take it back and say that you'll... Fine. No, you don't. You say, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Allow me to let my chef remake it. And you take it back. And you stare the chef in the eye. You're like, hair. Make one without. It's been a long day. You gather the staff in your house to give them the boss's words of wisdom. That in your house? What do you tell them? It's not acceptable to sit down at the table with the customers to listen to the gossip. Um. I've sat down at a table with a customer before. Um, I guess it depends. Like, if I have my regulars, yeah, I'll sit down with them for a little bit. Uh, pickpocket the customers if you want an extra tip. Work harder tomorrow. Then work harder the next day. Then 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 harder the next day. When talking to a customer, stare intently at their forehead to make them uncomfortable. They soon forget what they were complaining about. Okay. I think I think you should pickpocket the customers if you want an extra tip. Never mind how they're sitting in chairs. Never mind. Why not try one of my extra quizzes? There's no reason not to. <laughs> shall we? Yes, chef. Yes, oh, no. I didn't want to go. No, I can go back. Yes, chef. <clears throat> Finally. How you go about shutting... How do you go about shutting shop restaurant at the end of the day? By having chefs stay behind to make you dinner, then prepare a big breakfast the whole night for you to wake up to. Then it's right back to work. We need it. By sweeping up the crumbs and placing them in more appealing places, like the trash can. By blasting folk music from the stereo and conducting a scientific experiment to see which ladle melts the fastest in the oven, with three pe repeats and an average, of course. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I wonder if you can deep fry a saucepan. Yeah, sure, let's do it. By demolishing the building, firing the staff, and taking the money from the till. Cheerio! 
I mean, honestly, by blasting folk music and con conducting scientific experiments. That's just how we close restaurants, right? Compliments to the chef. You like this delicious home-baked quiz? Mmm, the smell and taste. Maybe share your opinion in the comments. Nope. I would care to hear what you, yes, you, have to say. Nope. Please share your thoughts with the group. Nope. Or whisper them to me in the message section. I will open my ears for you. Nope. Tell me anything. Maybe. P.S. Part two of this quiz has been released. The restaurant critic comes to visit you and become the chef. And you become the chef. Roger that, chef. What kind of kitchen utensil am I? Ferric. I'm a fork. I'm a fork. Just like the fork, your idea of a wild and controversial opinion is, I don't like Starbucks. I like Starbucks. You probably think you are edgy and cool. Yeah. Are you, though? Maybe. No one knows your biggest secret. You can't tell the time, and you never will be able to. Hang on. I always wear my watch at work, and I can always tell you the time. I'm paying very close attention to the time. How else would I know when my customers' foods are supposed to come out, or if the kitchen screwed it up? Anyway, friends. This turned from probably funny into probably not very funny, as I just explained some aspects of the restaurant industry. So, um, have a good night. I'm proud of you. Hopefully I'll see you next time. And don't get a food service job. They kind of suck sometimes. Bye!